Uh, hi folks, welcome to another screencast for A2PE uh, Exercise Physiology. Uh, we're looking at health components of physical fitness and in particular body composition and energy expenditure. Uh, as always, please watch the screencast, take notes uh, and bring any questions you have and your notes to your next lesson. Uh, this screencast will cover the basic information you need to know uh, about those two topics, body composition and energy expenditure, and of course we'll apply it more in the lessons. Okay, here we go. So just some basic information first of all about body composition. Now body composition is made up of two uh, kind of components. Fat mass, which is the percentage of body fat, or sorry, body weight that is thought as fat, and also lean body mass, which is the weight of the rest of the body, which is your kind of non-fat tissues. They are like your um, organs and muscles and bones. And just an important point to kind of note just now, that no matter what fat percentage you have within your body you can still be an elite performer and we will look at those two um, kind of things as we go through this screencast and in lessons as well okay we're going to be looking at how you can measure body composition and the first one we're going to look at is something called hydrostatic weighing and this is basically where uh, an athlete or a person is weighed whilst totally immersed in a water tank as you can see on the uh, screen just now. Now this is the most accepted measure of body composition in terms of the most scientific. However it is quite expensive and you can't you'd be uh, hard pushed to find somewhere locally that actually uh, has this facility available. And how it's measured is that it is the difference between the athlete's scaled weight, i.e. before they go in the water, and the underwater weight. And the difference between those two is the athlete's fat mass percentage. Now as fat floats uh, in water more, therefore the more fat an individual has, the greater difference between the dry and the wet weights. So that's how kind of um, body composition is assessed using the hydrostatic weighing method. There are some clips on YouTube so please access those so you can see those um, for yourself. The next one we're going to look at is something called bioelectrical impedance spectroscopy or BIS for short. And What happens with BIS is that um, first of all you um, you kind of input your person your your height and your weight into like electronic advice and then electrodes are placed on your feet and your hands as the picture is shown just there and our current passes through your body in particular the fluids within your muscle tissue between the electrodes on your hand and your feet and when this current encounters resistance when it passes through fat tissue this is then called your bioelectrical impedance and this kind of uh, resistance that it gets um, is recorded by electronic monitor and therefore it calculates your uh, kind of body fat percentage. The next one we're going to look at is something called skin fold calipers. This is the third measure. And basically skin fold calipers um, are measured at various points within the body. And what it's looking to do is to measure the level of subcutaneous fat below the skin at a variety of sites on the body. And then basically these, these sites consist of four or six different parts of the body and the sum of all these measurements is used in an equation to estimate the body fat percentage and hopefully in lessons we'll get a chance to kind of um, try some skin fold calipers out perhaps on your triceps and your biceps to see how you can actually go about measuring it. Okay the fourth one that we're going to look at is something called body mass index or BMI which you've probably heard about and is the most widely kind of used measure of measuring body composition but there are some um, bad points to BMI which we'll perhaps discuss more in lessons. Basically it's a measure of weight in relation to a person's height and it's based on a formula such as this. You take your weight in kilograms and you divide it by 
your height in meters squared. So for example, if a person weighs 80 kilograms and they are 1.8 meters tall, that's the formula that we're going to be using to work out our BMI. So the BMI for this person is 24.7. So if you could all please weigh yourself in kilograms and get someone to measure your height in meters and look at the formula and please work out your BMI before you come to your next lesson with you, with myself or Richie. There are some negative sides to BMI which we'll discuss in lessons. However, if we look at a, at, at a rugby player just here, um, his BMI will likely to be quite high. But that doesn't take into account um, that he can play at a very competitive level uh, internationally for a number of years. So although his BMI perhaps showing him as perhaps being obese, that doesn't really take into account um, the um, his ability to perform in, in sport at a decent level. So we will look at BMI in more detail in the lessons. Okay, so we are going to look at something that I like to call the obesity seesaw before we move on to uh, energy expenditure. Now the obesity seesaw is based under two principles, your calorie intake and your calorie outtake. Now if you're calorie outtake matches your calorie intake i.e. the amount of calories you burn is matched with the calories you take in then of course you're going to stay at a level playing field in terms of weight gain however if you eat more calories i.e. more calories in than you do if you when you uh, exercise i.e. calories out or burnt then of course over a period of time you're going to gain weight so what's really important to understand that in order to kind of maintain uh, a healthy weight, your calories in, the, the amount of food you eat or the calories you eat, has to be matched with how many calories you burn off. And what we're seeing inside to these days is that people are becoming obese due to a lifestyle disease, i.e. they eat more calories than they burn off. And we're looking at that in more detail in lessons. We are now moving on to something called energy expenditure and um, we'll look at this in a lot more detail in lessons however we're going to cover the very basic information of it just now now energy expenditure we look at something called your metabolic rate uh, you may have heard about this before but this is basically the rate of um, kind of kind of energy expenditure within your body and it's based on a number of things it is based on the thermic effect or the digestion of your food, so how much energy you burn by digesting your food. It's also based on um, how many calories you burn when you, put, uh, when you kind of uh, participate in physical activity. And it is also based on your resting metabolic rate, which is your RMR. And we're going to look at a calculation to calculate RMR, which you guys are going to do and bring to your next lesson. So we're looking at RMR first of all. Okay, so we're looking at how you calculate your resting metabolic rate, your RMR. And it's different for males and females. So I'll give you the both formulas to calculate it. Okay, so let's imagine a male weighs 150 pounds. So uh, calculating metabolic rate, guys, is to do with pounds and not kilograms. Okay, please understand that. So to work out your resting metabolic rate, the amount of calories you burn whilst at rest, this is how you do it. You multiply your body weight in pounds by 10. You then add double the body weight to this value. So this is the figures that you should be looking at and the answer you get if you're weighing 150 pounds. So 150 pounds is the body weight, multiply it by 10 and then you add 300 which is double the body weight and you get 1800 calories per day. So if this male just sat around the house did absolutely 
absolutely nothing he would need 1800 calories to match the energy requirements of sitting around the house and doing nothing if you're a female and you weigh 150 pounds this is what you do you multiply your body weight in pounds by 10 but instead of adding double the body weight you just add the body weight to the value so you get this 150 pounds times 10 plus 150 which equals 1650 calories per day so if you as a female wanted to sit on the house and do absolutely nothing and you weighed 150 pounds you would require or would you you would kind of burn off 1650 calories per day by doing absolutely nothing okay guys that's it okay please go to the screencast again please if you want to uh, read around the area before you come to the lesson but bring your notes bring any questions you've got and we shall see you in lessons.